Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on enabling multi-factor authentication for your Salesforce. My name is Arturo Ordecki, and I'm Demand Blue's practice head for our nonprofit and higher education clients. I'm excited to share with you about some guidelines for enabling Salesforce's multi-factor authentication for your users. And hopefully if the technology and inter internet cooperate today, give you a demo of what the experience will be like for your users as well. Before we get started, please make sure to put any questions you have during the presentation in the Q&A box, and we will get to as many of them as possible at the end of today's presentation. I also want to just take a moment to say thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time, especially as we near the end of the year, to join us today. Demand Blue is honored to get to work with over 100 Salesforce customers in providing support, advisory services, and educational services like this webinar today to help your organizations and institutions maximize the utilization of what Salesforce can provide you. For today's webinar, I want to make sure that you're able to walk away with an understanding of what is multi-factor authentication and how does it impact you and your organization? What are the options for implementing multi-factor authentication? What will that experience be for your users once you have that enabled? And what are the resources that are available from Salesforce and Demand Blue to help you along the way? Because usually this is saved to the end of the slide and attendees are trying to capture lots of notes and links, I wanted to let you know that we will be providing this deck with you along with links to all of these resources that are provided from Salesforce to help you be successful in your implementation. So as an attendee, you will get a copy of this today's presentation and the recording that we're doing. So to get started, what is multi-factor authentication or MFA? It is a security standard that requires multiple forms of authentication in order to access a system or service. In order to be compliant with the Salesforce MFA requirement, a user must have at least two forms of authentication. One that they know, like their username and password, and a second item that they have, such as a mobile device through which they can authenticate. The idea behind that is that in a if a bad actor gets access to your username and password, the likelihood that they'll also have access to your physical device, while not zero, is low and therefore improving your security of your system versus just relying on the username and password alone. So you may be wondering, how does this impact me? In general, if you are logging into your Salesforce production environments directly, whether that be sales, service, marketing, nonprofit, education, health, or any of the other Salesforce clouds, this will impact you and your users. So hopefully that means everyone on this call will be impacted. Some things to be aware of is that this MFA requirement does not apply to sandboxes except for the B2C commerce cloud sandboxes. Those are required to have MFA um, enabled. For your other sandboxes, it is recommended but is not required that you do it. We definitely would encourage you looking at things like full copy sandboxes and evaluating what is the right for your system. Some organizations we know have single sign-on or virtual private network set up. While these do help improve the security and ease of your users accessing, they don't on their own qualify for the MFA guidelines. And we will speak to some of the things that you need to do if this applies to your organization later in today's webinar. Another item that you may be thinking about is customers that have experience cloud portals where partners, clients, um, customers, and others interact with your Salesforce environments. These um, users are not impacted by MFA and will not have to do an additional authentication. Again, these are for the experienced individuals that are experienced or logging in through your experience cloud portal. If they are logging in as a partner directly into your Salesforce environment, such as a consulting partner like the Man Blue, those partners and any users that are logging in directly into Salesforce production are impacted and must be MFA compliant. 
there are several options that Salesforce allows for you to achieve your compliance for multi-factor authentication. In today's webinar, I'll be focusing on the Salesforce Authenticator app, but know that there are other options and resources that, are, that were linked to earlier, give you walkthroughs on how to implement these other tools to meet your minimum requirements. The main options for MFA are the Salesforce Authenticator app, third-party authenticator apps such as the Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator, a physical fob or security key. You may have heard to them refer to as UB keys. These are like little USB devices that you can connect into your machine, as well as any biometric built-in authenticator such as fingerprint or face IDs that devices have today. The important thing to know is that Many of us are familiar with the email or texting of a verification code from Salesforce, and this no longer will meet the multi-factor authentication guidelines that Salesforce has provided. So make sure that you have another tool and process in place. Determining what the right solution is for your company, organization, or institution, really depends on your company's policies. So make sure to check with your HR and legal teams to determine the best process for your company. In general, if your organization already has an authentication app or tool that you are using, the recommendation is for you to continue to use that tool as the multi-factor authenticator for your Salesforce environment. It's one less app or device for your staff members to keep track of and will just simplify the learning and rollout of the authentication for Salesforce. If your organization does not have any such process in place already, Demand Blue recommends the use of the Salesforce Authenticator app. It's a free app. It's maintained by Salesforce to ensure compliance with the multi-factor authentication. And it has some nice built-in features such as Einstein location that help auto approve um, logins and authentications based on the location of the physical device. The good news is that this doesn't have to be a one size fits all. As long as your staff is using multi-factor authentication tools, they can select the authentication tool that works best for them. So while most of your staff may be using the Salesforce authenticator, if a staff member already has the Google authenticator or other third party app, installed on their phone and they prefer to use that, they definitely can. So now that you know what multi-factor authentication is and how will it will impact your company and some of the options that you have, I wanted to walk through some of the next steps that will really help your organization with the rollout of MFA to your staff next month. The first thing to do is to go to your setup menu and look at the MFA assistant guide in your setup menu. This walks you through a number of resources, videos, and documents that you can use to make sure that your rollout is successful. It's a great place to start and Salesforce has done a really good job providing that assistance. The second thing is really working on your documentation, making sure that the staff know what your timeline is and what the steps are that um, are necessary to roll to turn on and download their authenticator and get it connected to their Salesforce login. Now, in the MFA um, rollout packet that was linked to earlier, there are some sample slide decks that you can use to make this even easier for your organization to build that documentation. The next recommended guidance is to create a permission set. By creating a permission set, this allows you to enable multi-factor authentication for a select number of users that are kind of like your test or pilot users. This allows you to work out any challenges or concerns that they may have or any issues that maybe need to be documented in your FAQ for staff for the larger rollout. Regardless of whether they're the test users or your company-wide rollout, we definitely encourage um, organizations where possible to do a walkthrough with the users the first time they're setting it up. It's very easy and it's self-guided, 
but folks can get tripped up if they're not used to using Authenticator apps for other systems. Make sure that you get lots of feedback and that you also have a plan for providing support um, the day that you roll it out organization-wide in case anyone does kind of get locked out or has trouble using the Authenticator app. So now with technology and live demo karma allowing, I'm gonna walk you through some of the experiences for your users so that you can see just how easy it is to enable multi-factor authentication and for them to connect their environment, connect to their Salesforce environment. So on the left-hand side of the screen, I've logged into my sandbox environment and I've created a permission set called MFA user enablement. The setting that we're looking for is in the system permissions. And you'll want to scroll way down to multi-factor authentication for user interface logins and enable that for this permission set. Now, if you do you know, a find, you may run into this one, manage multi-factor authentication and user interface, but that is not the permission that you need for your users. It is the one further down. So make sure that you've selected the correct one. Once you've done that, then you can assign to your staff members. In this case, we've assigned it to Dinesh, our system administrator, and Monica, our program director, as our test users. So now I'm gonna log out and walk you through the process that Dinesh will follow the next time he logs in to his Salesforce environment now that MFA has been enabled. So when I go here to the login screen, I enter my username and password. Again, this is the part that the user knows. And on the, I'm immediately prompted to connect my Salesforce Authenticator app. Now, if somebody needs to download it, there are provided download links. If they want to use another um, authentication tool, such as a security key or a different Authenticator app, they would just simply click on choose another verification method and it would walk you through the process of having to do that. But for this purpose, we're gonna use our Authenticator app. Now, if this is the first time you're using your Salesforce Authenticator app, when you first open it, it will provide you a really nice add an account button. Um, but since I'm adding this as a second account, I'm gonna click on the add account on the bottom of the screen. You'll see my phone is on the right-hand side of the screen here. I'm provided a two word phrase to enter into my Google, my Salesforce login screen. I enter it in and then I hit connect. We'll then see on my mobile device that there's a, a request to connect the account. I'm able to click on the bottom right button that says connect. And now I've authenticated both on the phone, I get the confirmation message and on my login screen and I'm able to log in. Now this is a sandbox, so that's why there's no data here, but um, we can definitely you know, log into your environment. Now, I am gonna log out again, because I do wanna show you what happens the next time Dinesh logs into their system. So I've added my account and now I'm logging in again. When I log in, I am prompted to authenticate again. And you'll see on my phone on the right-hand side, I received a notification to approve my login. Now, one thing I wanna call your attention to is the item that says always approve from this location. It provides you the location that it, your phone has been geolocated to. And if this is your common work um, office location, then you may want to, if, it, if it's okay with your company policy, to select the always approve from this location. This is that nice feature that the Salesforce Authenticator app has so that it reduces the number of times that you have to actually open the app and authenticate. As long as the app is running in your background, it'll auto authenticate and let, you, let your user move right into their environment. And there we have it. We've now shown you how to create the permission set and just how easy it is to set up the Authenticator app and connect it to your Salesforce login. Fortunately, the 
uh, demo went very well, and we don't need to use the slides, but I do want to let you know that when you receive the slide deck, the process we just walked through is included in there so that you have your reference, as well as um, quick guide as to where to find um, this information, such as the Salesforce admin guide to multi-factor authentication, pages 23 and 24, talk about the permission set. Um, there is a little video that um, walks you through that just in case you needed it. And the Salesforce MFA rollout pack, as I mentioned earlier, does have sample slides that you can edit and customize for your organization that walk you through the process of installing the app and going through the items that I just walked through in the demo. So these slides will be there for you. Now, while I've been focusing on the Salesforce Authenticator app, I, as I mentioned at the start, there are some special considerations for SSO and VPN users. While these alone do not meet the multi-factor authentication requirements for Salesforce, there are ways to become compliant. If you are a single sign-on identity provider user, there you have the option of enabling the multi-factor authentication with your single sign-on identity provider in their system, or there is a way to turn it on so that after they log in through the SSO, they are presented with that authentication app um, option in Salesforce, very similar to what we just walked through. Um, so make sure that you evaluate which is the right option for you and your organization based on your SSO identity provider. The steps um, are linked here um, that show you what you need to do if you're gonna opt to do the multi-factor authentication on the Salesforce side. For those of you that are using a virtual private network, while this does count as your trusted connection, it is not enough. And you, um, in order to meet MFA, you must have what Salesforce calls um, trusted corporate devices. So these would be devices that are managed um, by the corporation. So if you have both of those in place and your users are not just accessing it through the VPN, but accessing your um, Salesforce environment through corporate owned and managed devices, then, or at least corporate managed devices, then that does satisfy the VPN or the MFA requirements for a virtual private network scenario. If your devices are not corporate managed, then you will need to enable the multi-factor authentication in order to be compliant. The MFA frequently asked question link does provide some additional guidance and resources as to what is necessary and what qualifies as a managed device. So as you see, it is pretty easy to enable and use multi-factor authentication. Now it's time to plan your rollout. This um, key items to remember is that by February 1st, Salesforce um, is requiring that you have MFA enabled for your organization. So make sure to start planning your new security processes for the new year. Work to make sure that you have created the documentation using the tools and resources that Salesforce has provided to prepare your staff for what is involved with the multi-factor authentication and the steps that they will need to do to download the information or to download the apps or request a physical device um, according to your company's policies and what you're allowed. Of course, the last thing is to make sure that even though you've done an amazing job preparing your staff, provided all the documentations, had lunch and learns and other trainees, there is gonna be um, somebody that did not follow or is caught by surprise when MFA gets rolled out in your organization. So make sure that you've clearly communicated and have resources in hand to provide um, live support for your staff when your multi-factor authentication is turned on to make sure that folks don't get locked out of their system. Once again, here are the links and resources that Salesforce has provided. We will provide these to you in the PDF of the today's slides and presentation. So I just wanna say thank you again for joining us today. 
we're really excited to be a part of your MFA journey and look forward to working with you to make sure that this rollout for your company, organization, or institution um, goes as smoothly as possible. If you do have any other questions um, that come up after today's webinar, please don't hesitate to reach out to your customer success manager. We'll be happy to help you. Thanks and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.